Welcome back to Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you by you. I am your host, Ronnie McBride, and I'd like to apologize to you guys because I was going to get this video out to you yesterday, but unfortunately I was sick. I went to a one-year-old birthday party the week prior, and there were a bunch of little kids there. And as you know, with little kids comes germs. They're just little walking Petri dishes, but we love them. We love them so much. But I got sick and it took me out for a few days. But I'm back now and I want to move forward with giving you another look into Affinity Photo Beta. I will still be doing the Affinity Photo, um, excuse me, the Affinity Designer videos as well too. But I just wanted to give you a look into photo at one of the features and actually answer another question from one of the users in the forum who... Um, didn't know how to use the thaw and the freeze uh, brush that's uh, available in Affinity Photo's Liquify Persona. Okay, so I got this little simple image here um, of this model wearing a, um, a dress. It's a costume, of course, here. And uh, maybe not for everybody, but this is a costume. And um, before, you know, before one of these products actually hit online what they like to do is they like to have some of these things touched up because um you know they want their product to look the best that it can and of course the model look the best that she can as well too so there were just a couple of little small areas that i wanted to focus on and kind of correct that i didn't think were um uh, beneficial to the model or the dress itself so if you can see here, I went ahead and I kind of touched up uh, a couple of things in this area here, in this area. I didn't like how the material was actually laying on her. So I used actually um, frequency separation to do that, and I'll show you that. And I've kind of touched up those areas a little bit. I could probably do a little bit more, but I think this is good for now. Now, if you haven't, um, if you're not familiar with frequency separation, definitely take a look at my frequency uh, frequency separation video uh, that I did prior to this one. Okay, so moving ahead, um, so I made those corrections here, and so what I want to do now is I want to take this into the liquify and just kind of move a couple of points on this uh, on this model. Um, to, you know, just make it look a little bit better, a little bit more, um, you know, cleared up. The thing about moving into the liquify persona is that uh, you can't liquify a group, okay? And as you know, when we do frequency separation, we get a group. We get the high frequency and the low frequency layer, and I've made a, a group for those two, two functions. Okay, so if you go up to the top here and you go to document, add snapshot, and we'll say, we'll call this post um, um, FS, frequency separation. Okay, I know what that means. And just hit OK. All right, so now I've created this snapshot of this current state. This uh, image is now merged down to this one image. And you say, where is that? But I will show you. If you go over here to layer and you go new layer from snapshot, you can see here, I've already done one before, but I just wanted to show you um, how I went through that process. If you go to post FS, now we have this new snapshot that is where our current state is in the process of this document, okay? So if I turn this off, that's my before, this is now my after. And now this is what I'm going to be working on from here on in. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to the liquify persona and I'm just gonna run through a couple of things so you guys can get the lay of the land here. Left hand side, these are all your tools. As usual in any persona, your tools are always here on the left. Your palettes are on the right. Um, divisions controls the divisions of this, this graph here uh, that's laying over your image, which is actually called the mesh. Okay, and when you make adjustments to this mesh, you can actually see as I move it that it, it um, the lines actually flow with that movement, okay? So I'm just gonna change that here. If you go over here, um, you can reconstruct the mesh as well too. Um, we're gonna leave that alone. You can load meshes, you can save meshes. So I guess if you do a lot of work uh, on a particular product or something like that, or anything really, you could just save out those meshes and then reload them into the new file that you open up. Uh, down here, you have all your navigation tools for your brush. Um, um, your navigation for zooming around in this area here or zooming in and out, just like you do in your main main nav uh, in the other personas. Um, you have the opacity of your brush, the speed at which the effect happens, 
And then um, down here, the ramp is the... I, I think this controls the influence of the effect. Um, I would just probably leave it on Gaussian. I don't really know, you know, maybe linear and Gaussian are probably the only ones I would be somewhat familiar with. But the Sigmund cosine square, I mean, those are all mathematical. I'm a designer. I'm not even going to touch any of that stuff, uh, at least for right now. And then uh, you have this mask, uh, invert mask. I'm not quite sure how I would use that. I'm going to have to take a look at the help files for that, but not important. Not important for us right now. And of course, we got our history to go back and forth um, over the changes that we've made and then our, our channel control as well, too. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to do something very simple here because I just want to show um, the user who was asking, what is freeze and thaw? Um, here are all your tools. You have your push, your push left tool. I use the push. I'm not quite sure what this push left is about. Uh, liquefy twirl tool. You have the liquefy pinch tool, the liquefy turbulence, liquefy mesh clone, and liquefy construct. So play around with those guys. I can explain it, but I'm trying to keep this video short. And uh, I'm just going to focus on these two tools down here. Okay, so that's the F and the W shortcut keys. Uh, F for freeze, W for thaw, P for push. And those are what I'm going to focus on, okay? Now, this is the beta, and I, one of the things that I, I, I was having an issue with is I want to use my left and right ma brackets to control the size of my brush because I hate having to go all the way over here. But that's what we'll have to do for this right now. But what's important right now is to... What you need to know about freeze and thaw is... Freeze is... Um, a way of painting in a certain area of your image to um, tell Affinity Photo that we don't want any of these pixels in this area to be affected by our adjustment brush, which will be the push tool, okay? So as I'm, you know, moving things around on this particular model, um, I don't want this to be affected okay so I colored that in with the freeze and then I'll go over here and I'll hit P on my keyboard I'll go over here increase the size of this brush and I will just move this area here a little bit and as you see nothing is up oh, I'm still I have a little bit of influence here that's being affected so I'm gonna command Z that right and I'm gonna just go and make sure I hit my my um, freeze tool again and just paint that in real good. I'm gonna turn my opacity up. I'm gonna paint that in real good. Maybe even bleed into the white already because it's white and I don't have to really worry about that being blurred or moved. And then I'm gonna go back to my P tool. I'm gonna to increase my brush size again. And I'm just gonna pull that in. And as you see, none of those, none of those uh, pixels were dragged with that, okay? If I don't freeze a certain area, well, I'll show you what happens, what happens if I pull it on this side. You see how it's pulling the arm? Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to hit our freeze tool. Get in here and just kind of paint in those pixels. You don't have to get the whole arm, but let's just make sure. We're going to paint in that area, right? And then we're going to grab our... Um, P tool once again. I'm going to increase my brush size here and I'm just going to go ahead and just tuck that in a bit. If I'm if I'm getting a little bit of pull, hit my freeze tool, drop down my size. Now you see why I want my brackets to be able to size this thing out instead of having to always go back and forth and you see how much faster it is to use uh, shortcuts too as well. So definitely try to memorize as many shortcuts as you can guys. And there we go. I'll just do that one more time. I'm going to hit my P tool, increase my brush size, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull this in just a tad. Oops, oops a little bit too much there. I'm just going to Command Z that. And tad in there. And then uh, maybe I'll just go over here, decrease the size here, and maybe just move the chest area just a tad in. Nothing too crazy. You know, um, some free surgery here. Okay, and I might move some of these things around. And again, if there were areas that I did not want to be affected, I would use the freeze to freeze it and to uh, erase those areas, basically, 
would be to use the uh, thaw tool, okay? And you heard that beeping is because I want to use my brackets to decrease the size of my brush. And I'll just go in here at those areas I could thaw. All right, so once you've made all the adjustments that you want, you will go over here, you uh, hit apply. Excellent. And there you go. So there's your, there's your adjustment. So here's our original. And here's the adjustment we made. Okay, slight and, and, and just very small adjustments, guys. You know, some people go a little bit too crazy with the adjustments. I mean, you see it a lot with a lot of the, you know, celebs and the models and stuff like that. And it's out of control. I personally myself try to stay away from doing that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's, you know, it's a horrible um, false likeness of the individual. And uh, I don't think it benefits anybody especially our, our youth today. Anyway, thanks again, guys, for watching. This is Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you by you. And again, keep your eye on this channel because you never know. I might feel like making a video before next Tuesday. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the lucky person to catch it. All right, guys, have a great one, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to receive 50% off my training, make sure you sign up at MixedMediaSalad.com.